Hello, and welcome to another episode of This Old Max. I am your host, FreeW67, and in this episode we'll be discussing fences and its relationship with the fence post. Uh, we'll be lofting the fence, and then we will be using a spline for the fence post, but we won't be lofting it, we'll be using the spacing tool. So let's get started. Hopefully you still have the spline you used to create the wall. So we'll be lofting the fence off of that. So let's start with drawing the fence itself. I'm just going to do a simple straight up for about three meters and then a slight bend in. All right. Let's put it roughly in the center of the wall. try to get that exact and then this you can just wing it yeah if you want it real big real small but for this we'll just use that let's set a texture to this to this line our fence is three okay and we need to adjust the pivot point Should be 10, and in this example, uh, I I used this for the pivot point originally on the wall, but then it took the wall into the track where this was actually on the outside of the track. So I had to move the pivot point to the inside for it to work properly. So we'll be doing the same thing here. That's 0.35. Now, if this works the way it's supposed to, this should be right roughly center of the wall. Okay. That's lofted. There's my wall line. Alright, looks about right. Show you what I'm looking at here. I'm just making sure it looks about roughly the center of the wall, which it does. Works for me. Let's drop the texture on it. Edible poly. Let's select it all. And X form. So let's see. Uh, 400. Rotate at 90. Uh, good enough. So there you have a quick fence that will sit on top of the wall. If you didn't want to sit it on top of the wall, you wanted to sit behind the wall. Obviously, when we went to draw the line, uh, you would have just made it all the way down to here, uh, to the bottom of the wall, and then just move the center point off outside the wall a little bit. That way it will draw, you know, you can still use that spline, but it will draw the fence behind the wall. So now let's work on the fence post. Sorry for the jumping around, Max crashed. If it hasn't happened to you, it will. Alright, well, I'll use a cylinder for the fence post. I'll do about 0.08. Height's kind of irrelevant, but I'll do about 4 meters right now. 2 segments and 6 sides. reason for 6 sides is... Max should smooth properly around five. It just looks a lot better with six. Now, if you're gonna, if you think you're gonna be tight on polys, then I would go with the five. And if it's a straight up and down pole, I mean you're only adding one poly to the pole, and for this type of pole, two. So it's not that bad. It just depends on how many poles you're gonna have in the track. Now if you have a nice round looking pole texture, this is the time to texture it. What I'm going to use is a tileable metal texture 
that doesn't matter if I bend the top or not, it'll still look the same. So I'm just going to go ahead and move it first before I texture it. I'm going to stick it just above the outside of the fence so it's a little hangover. Alright, so let's poly select it all. Let's zoom in. Our metal post is 8. You can see the 8 number 8 right there. not X-Form it, I will, since we created it, I will unwrap UBW. I would not unwrap UBW, I'm sorry. I will UBW map, then box, and then real world. Next I will delete the bottom poly, because it's going to be sitting on top of the wall, it's just not needed. And then I will detach the top poly to help the smoothing of the top part of the pole but I'll just detach the element because I don't want to delete it so you can see it's still there now we just need to fix the pivot point why it does that I have no idea so we'll just do that again All right, looks like it fixed it Okay, so now, if you haven't already, with the f wall and the fence, you need a spline around the outside of the track that is linear. That Because you need it to follow, especially with the wall, you need it to follow the track perfect so you don't have any gaps. With the spacing tool, it doesn't work off a linear spline. You need a smooth spline. So now would be the time to, just like we created the outside spline, do the same thing, but make sure you have smooth check. All right, make sure your original pole is selected. All right, fence post one. Let's go up here to tools, align, spacing tool. We need to pick our path. This is not always the easiest. Hey, it worked first go. Okay, so one bad thing is, and I don't know if it's my settings or it's just the way it is, is that as you move around to try to look at the post you have in there for now, they'll disappear to you set them in stone so let's do 40 and we need to do follow okay it doesn't look like they're all facing the right direction and that's where we need to go and select our original again See if rotating at 90 degrees changes. Oh, undo. Snap angle on. All right, let's go back to here. Turned it the wrong way. So now let's rotate it 180. Forty. Now, as you can see, uh, we'll just click apply because it looks like everything's facing the right way. As you can see, everything looks to be you know it's on the wall. It's not angled right because of the banking, but this is where we go in and fix it all. So now we need to select our original pole. Okay, the base looks to be fairly close. It might be able to move it back just a little. Alright, we have our original pole selected and let's click vertexes. Vertice mode. Let's just move it back just a tick. Okay. So you can see here it looks to be roughly about through the center of the pole. So now let's adjust it to where the top matches. So let's just select the top. Move it in. Right, there's that, and there's that. All right, 
straightaway bits, that looks pretty good. Okay, now let's look at the base of the pole. How's that look? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Don't see it leaning too much. Might just be slightly in the top of the wall, which is perfectly fine. Now what we'll do here is let's so we know the straightaway parts of the poles are going to be fine. They're going to match perfect. So we'll select them. And I'm just going to show you this side for time purposes. We'll convert them to an edible poly. Now the banking will and the turns will be greater, so the poles aren't going to net necessarily line up as you can see here. So let's go back to our original pole. And we need to move it all still. As you can see the bottom of the pole looks to be just a little off. So let's move the bottom of the pole in, in a little. As you can see now you know that one's a little off but instead of going pole by pole by pole by pole now you can do a good chunk and get them right and then go in and fix some of the individual ones so we might be able to move this back just a tick and that kinda looks like it fixed this pole here yeah that looks alright looks alright a little close. You know, maybe you, you can do the next couple here on the other side of the track. And now remember, when you fix those two, if your track's symmetrical, it's going to fix these two and these two. So, you know, select all them, right-click Edible Poly, and then go around to the edge bits and do the same thing. So that way, you can do more at once instead of each of it. You know, like I said, each individual pull. It's going to save you oodles of time. And to be honest, I've only found this out recently. Uh, I was one who spent an hour to fix all of these fence posts. Uh, now I'm sure people are going to have questions. Any comments, you can please post them here. You can post them at my forum over at NSRS, which is nsrs.jawcentral.com. Thanks for watching.